Remember that commitment you made to prioritize your health? A simple fact of life is that how long you live and how healthy you are depends on factors such as feeding the body what's right and working out, however that may look to you. Today's magazine is about intensifying one of the staple messages coming out of our Ministry of Health, and that is paying attention to your well-being. So in this show that includes instructions on our HIV self-test kit, stories of a healthier you start right after the news. I'm Theodore Henry. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, June 23, 2022. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is calling on Jamaicans to finally resolve as a country to set aside differences and take every action necessary in an all-of-society effort to save lives and eradicate violence at its root. He issued the challenge while condemning yesterday's gruesome and horrific murder of a 31-year-old mother and her four children in Cocoa Piece, Clarendon. The deceased are the mother, Kamisha Wright, 15-year-old Kimana Smith, 10-year-old Shamari Smith, 5-year-old Kafana Smith, and a toddler, 23-months-old Kishan Henry. Mr. Holness says their murder is an act of savagery, barbarity, and brutality of unequal proportions that reinforces the need for us to continue pursuing a holistic approach to the disease of interpersonal violence in our society. It is heartbreaking, heartrending, this kind of violence cannot be allowed to continue without a response, without action on the part of the government. The Prime Minister's comments came shortly after landing in Kigali, Rwanda yesterday, where he is representing Jamaica at the 26th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. He expressed condolences to the family and loved ones of Ms. Wright and her children while giving a commitment that the full resources of the police would be used to investigate and prosecute the individual or individuals responsible. The statement from the Office of the Prime Minister reveals that the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, and other state agencies have been deployed to provide support. The Member of Parliament, Minister with Responsibility for Information, Robert Morgan, has also activated his internal support mechanisms to assist the family and community at this time. Potential investors in the logistics and free zone sectors recently got a hands-on glimpse of the opportunities to do business in Jamaica. They were taken on a tour of major investment project sites showcased by the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, and the Port Authority of Jamaica during the recent World Free Zones Organization ACE Conference in Montego Bay. Among the investments pitched was the 650-acre Caymanus Development Site, where investors can benefit from up to 50 years tax-free income on a long-term lease contract for the lands. We're going to put in between 40 and 60 million dollars to make sure that the utilities are at the gate. The country gets a developmental push when we get investors to come in and invest like this. That is the policy outline and outlook of the government. The group of investors also toured the Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited, where over $300 million has already been invested. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce Senator Aubin Hill says the policy outline that backs this and other special economic zones in Jamaica is robust, strong, legal and codified. Close to 17,000 operators of public passenger vehicles, PPVs, are set to benefit from government's gas relief grant. Applications for the grant opened on June 20, and owners of contract carriages and route taxi vehicles can now access $25,000. They will need to apply online at wecare.gov.jm and provide a valid Transport Authority road license issued no later than April 30, 2022, as well as their taxpayer registration number. Applicants also need to be the primary owner of the licensed vehicle. The $600 million grant fund is geared at cushioning the impact of the rising cost of fuel on the operators. The process is being managed by the Transport Authority. Corporate Communications Manager Merdina Callum says owners of multiple vehicles are eligible to receive a grant for each licensed vehicle. We are also asking all the operators 
with companies who are eligible that they um, designate an authorized officer and submit the person's CRA to collect the funds on behalf of those companies. For further information, contact the Transport Authority at 876-908-1997-28. Government will be focusing on a deposit refund scheme for plastic bottles backed by legislation. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Matthew Samuda, says the scheme aims to increase the percentage of plastic bottles collected for recycling. My information is that less than 20% of newly produced bottles are collected for recycling. Our targets need to be above 60% and we will ask over time as we build out this system to get formal declaration of this target in the way we have formal targets for protected areas. He says the government will be working with all stakeholders, including the opposition, as the policy, legislation and operational plans are developed. This statement in no way diminishes the efforts of the plastic manufacturers by way of the Jamaica Recycle pa Recycling Partners Initiative or that of any of the other recycling companies currently operating in Jamaica. Their efforts are to be acknowledged and congratulated. Minister Samuda was speaking in the Senate recently. And finally, government is moving to protect young people from e-cigarettes and tobacco products amid concerns about ease of access by children. A recent rapid assessment conducted by the National Council on Drug Abuse, NCDA, reveals widespread use and access to tobacco vaping devices among the youth in Jamaica. It's revealed that 15% of adolescents between ages 13 and 15 reported having used e-cigarettes. And of those who have used tobacco, 80% did so before the age of 14 years. Pointing to a worrying trend where adults are enablers, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton stresses that action can and will be taken under the Tobacco Control Act 2020. To those who are getting away with pushing the habit of smoking, particularly among our young people, I just want to say to them, the proposed bill, the bill, the proposed law has penalties for this kind of breach. You can, in parish court, be fined up to $1 million if you market or sell tobacco products to young people. The minister is calling on young people to recognize and be wary that e-cigarettes and vaping are harmful to their health and will cause sickness and early death. It's worse than the tobacco that you smoke because that chemical that is in that thing will affect your lungs, your brain and everything else. Dr. Tufton was speaking at a recent NCDA Youth Forum held at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. What are we are full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> they said the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, oh no, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta, collect a medal. I'm on top. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. What pre. <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. I don't know the app to get the updates then. Thanks to the Ministry of Health, a HIV self-testing kit is available as an option to know your status. Here are the ways in which you can access this. The National Family Planning Board takes 
pride in launching HIV self-testing as another option for persons who want to know their HIV status. And yes, it is here. We're putting this product into the hands of members of the public through a very important public-private partnership through the pharmacies. And this will facilitate our reach to a wider audience. This kit allows persons to self-test within the comfort of their homes or to opt for a self-test at a healthcare facility. So you and your partner can do the test. So we are encouraging the sexually active persons at high risk to make use of available kits to determine their HIV status. The National HIV Programme is continuing its mandate of ensuring the provision of care through this new modality. This joins existing modalities of provider-initiated testing and counselling offered at our health facilities, outreach testing provided by our prevention team, and targeted testing through contact tracing and counselling. Testing allows for two things, the indication of a positive test or the provision of a negative result. For all persons who do self-testing, there are also an, uh, avenues available for prevention, for treatment, and counseling. So we're not just sending you to do a self-test at home. All health facilities in Jamaica can guide you through the process of a positive or a negative test. However, there are 44 treatment sites in the public and private setting that you can go to get expert treatment and management of any HIV condition and HIV itself. The listing of all these health facilities is available on the Ministry of Health and Wellness's website. It will be available at the pharmacies that will be doing the self-testing and it will also be available on our NFPB website. This initiative by the Ministry of Health and Wellness through the National Family Planning Board is welcomed as Jamaica moves towards epidemiological control of HIV. This fits into our sustained effort to have more persons being tested for HIV, as well as increase the number of persons who are aware of their HIV status. Globally, the body UNAIDS has had challenges back in 2020 to have a 90% of all people living with HIV to know their status another 90% of people to be diagnosed with HIV infection receiving sustained antiretroviral um, ARV treatment and the last 90 of persons to be on antiretroviral treatment to attain viral suppression. No, the wider availability of the HIV test has the opportunity to ensure the realization of the first 90-90 targets. Success in this endeavor will mean we can end AIDS pandemic by 2030. The challenges to the continuum of care are being addressed by the program. This is one of the things to definitely um, make that happen. Checking our HIV status, especially if we are sexually active and not using protection, this is important for you to make sure you get this um, self-test kit. Have the fluid for actually conducting the test and your swab stick that you will use and test for your results. Now when persons hear about the oral test they usually think that it's just push it into your mouth but we don't want to be testing the saliva you actually need to rub along the gum line both top and bottom of the gum to ensure and it's kind of you have to do it hard to ensure that you are getting the cells and you insert it in the container now you'll have to wait for 20 minutes to read it is suggested that you read at 20 minutes not long after not before so there you go your results will be presented here. If you get a reactive or a positive result, you need to ensure that this result is confirmed through a confirmatory test. So you can go to any one of our treatment sites, 
to get a confirmatory test done. We are proud to partner with the Ministry of Health and the National Family Planning Board and we are pleased to add this to our list of services. This is indeed a step in the right direction as we empower our communities to take greater control of their health. We are confident that the purity of intent of the National Family Planning Board to make Jamaicans aware of their HIV status will indeed contribute positively to the general health and wellness of our citizens. I know that a lot of persons life will indeed be enhanced by this venture. There you have it. HIV self-testing is now here. You can go ahead and access these test kits at participating pharmacies across the island. And follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages to get more information about where these test kits are available. Proper exercise remains a critical part of a healthy body and overall well-being. In our next feature, get a step-by-step -step routine on losing weight and toning your body. Want this lean muscular physique and well-toned body framed for the beach carnival parade or just your regular dressed down or formal attire you want to cut the fat and develop that noticeable defined muscle and shape but not significant muscle size there's nothing wrong with any of that as long as you remember the most important thing is not a summer or designer body but rather a healthy body by doing efficient exercises and controlling your weight, you can expect to safely lose between 1 and 2 pounds a week on your journey to a more fit body. But doctors recommend that you should not lose more than 1 to 2 pounds per week. For many people, even this rate may be too aggressive in terms of dietary and exercise modifications. That body is not just going to come overnight, it's not going to come within two weeks or a month, depending, it all depends on the type of activity you do, how you do it. Within two months, if you stick to your exercise program and if it's done properly, you will see and feel results. Before starting any structured exercise program, however, persons should first consult with their doctor. The reason why we need a medical approval from our doctor is that a lot of us have pre-existing health conditions and some of us are not as fit as we think. For example, in Jamaica, 4 in 10 is hypertensive and they don't know it. And it's the same with diabetes, 4 in 10 and don't know it. And our stats tell us 7 out of 10 Jamaicans die from a chronic disease. We define physical activity by intensity level and the frequency in which we do it. Frequency meaning how often we do it per week, for example, two times per week or five days per week. The intensity is the energy in which we, which we use to perform the activity, meaning how hard you work out. There's three levels of intensity, low, moderate, and vigorous. If you want to lose weight, the Ministry of Health recommends 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise five days per week. To lose and maintain weight, 90 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise five days per week is recommended. There are two main categories of exercise, namely aerobic and anaerobic exercise. What this is saying that the body needs oxygen to break down fat that is stored in the body. All the calories stored in the body as fat need oxygen to break it down, that is in the tissue. So if you want to lose weight, you must do the aerobic activity to burn that fat that we use as energy when we're doing the activity. So the type of these are like swimming, running, dancing. It is normally done for a long period of time. When you decide to lose weight, you want results. Results keep you motivated and on track. Cardiovascular exercises are part of the aerobic category and they help you trim down by burning extra calories. While this helps shed excess fat and strengthens your cardiorespiratory system, it won't build the tone in your muscles that you're after. 
Now, when we talk about anaerobic activity, it is activity that does not need oxygen. It's quick, it's fast, it's snap. So most of the time, that activity will help to tone the muscles that we're looking for. But you cannot tone unless you know, we lose that fat. So you need to do the aerobic activity, then you do the anaerobic activity, which is like the weightlifting, the squats, the push-ups, the jumping, so that now you lose with aerobic and then you tone with anaerobic. Calories are the name of the game when you're trying to lose weight. Eat fewer calories than you burn and the scale will respond. Generally, um, we work with a 2,000 to 2,500 calorie intake per day for the general population. But for each person, their caloric requirements is different because we calculate it based on your specific age, your height, weight, gender, and how physically active you are. Females generally eat less because they carry less muscle mass than men and so they weigh less. The range is different. I, for someone who is very slim and short, then maybe 1,800 would be a safe amount to save for that person. But for men, 2,100 would be the lower end of the spectrum. You may create a caloric deficit, which will cause you to lose weight, but it's best to work with a balanced diet and exercise. A caloric deficit is when you consume less calories than what you're using for the day. So usually, persons try to cut their caloric intake significantly to lose a lot of weight at once, but consuming less than, say, 1,200 calories per day can cause you to have nutritional deficiencies, you can lose muscle and bone, and your body will also go into starvation mode so that you'll stop losing weight altogether. That's a no-no. The best way to slim down and tone up is to combine balanced diet and exercise. And avoid fad diets, such as low-carb, high-protein, or anything that deviates from a balanced diet. In Jamaica, we have food-based dietary guidelines that are specific to the Jamaican population, but it's based on the six food groups in the Caribbean. So we have food from animals, staples, legumes and nuts, fruits, vegetables and fats and oils. Losing weight at a rate faster than one to two pounds per week and regularly skipping meals can leave you feeling extraordinarily hungry so that you binge at the next opportunity, causing weight regain. Plan for three balanced meals per day, in addition to one or two healthy snacks. You want to include foods from all of your food groups. So say for example you're planning for lunch, you want to include either food from animals or a plant-based protein like beans or nuts. You have your staple foods like rice, bread or pasta. Your fruits and vegetables that you can include in a salad and you can put your fats and oils for example like in pear or avocado. Healthy snacks are low in fat, low in salt and low in sugar. So you can have a fruit or vegetables for example carrot sticks or you can use dried fruits and nuts. As a general guide, one serving of food from animals is the palm of your hand, a cup of rice is like your fist, and fats and oils is your thumb, that's one serving. Losing fat and retaining, or building muscle, creates a strong toned appearance. Do strength training activities that focus on all the major muscles and the entire body, upper, mid, and lower body. Plank is a good full body workout which helps to build strength in your core, upper and lower body. Those that focus on the lower body include lunges, using the stairs, leg press and squat exercises that effectively work most of the major muscle groups of the butt, hips and thighs. Some examples of exercises to strengthen the mid-body abdominal muscles include the side twist, traditional crunch, bicycle crunch and exercise ball. You can also try other activities to sculpt your legs, tone your thighs and bottom muscles, waist and abs. Ensure that you hydrate properly. It is good to take, drink water before, during and after your activity so you don't get dehydrated. Don't wait until you're thirsty, just take your water with you and sip, little sip, as you go along. So make sure you work out at an intensity level that suits you because every one of us are at a different fitness level. Getting and staying fit is a lifestyle change, so you have to make exercise a part of your daily routine and eat a balanced diet daily for a happier, healthier you.
Persons such as our next guest continue to show us how challenges such as hearing impairment should not stop us from realizing our dreams. Here's the story of Neville Anthony Aiken. had German measles, rubella, and either I could have had a physical disability, be blind, but I, w I became deaf and I'm happy with it, I'm perfect with it. My mother, she was really concerned, she didn't know where to put me. St. Christopher's School for the Deaf was too far, it was in Brownstone, so my mother held me at home till I was about six years old, and I found Danny Williams School for the Deaf. I was placed there at six and continued from there. The first time I signed, or the first time I witnessed sign language, was six. Before that, it was lip reading and gestures. The children would sign, but the teachers didn't sign. But I was good at lip reading, but the education aspect of it, learning, that wasn't a part of it. We were focusing on being able to speak and being with speech therapists, and that's why, hence, not having the great education I should. I was working at Jamaica Flour Mills, it was a good job, but communication was always a challenge. Sometimes there are a lot of misunderstandings, so I decided to resign. I, re I didn't work for one year, and then I had my son after that year, and then JD called me, Jamaica Association for the Deaf. It wasn't my goal to be a mentor, but it has truly been beneficial because the children need that. They need role models, they need mentors. I encourage the deaf children to have deaf pride, to know that they can. You are on the same level as a hearing person. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that you can't hear. You have a lot of deaf adults who are successful and you can, you can achieve. You can get the education that you want, you can do anything that you want, you can achieve. Don't feel like you can't because you're deaf. I'm the same hearing people who are teasing you and saying you're dumb and all these things. Don't focus on that. Focus on yourself and focus on improving yourself. With the sign language, everyone is included. That's my philosophy. So that means hearing people have to learn how to sign so that they can respect the deaf community. And the deaf person himself, himself or herself, will feel pride. Because when I think back on when I was growing up, how I was forced to lip read and forced to talk, I'm happy to see now that sign language is there and everybody is using it and that's my philosophy. The food you eat can either be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. There's a quote from Anne Wigmore. We implore you to make the right choices for your body and mind and commit to the course. While we leave you with those words, do remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and engage with us on our YouTube channel. Much more content is available on our website where you can choose to view at your convenience. Look out for a fresh production tomorrow, but until then, from all of us here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.